What is up, my Nova Kingdom? It's Nova King back again. It's been a hot minute. It has been a very long, hot minute. Um, I, um, hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm sorry that I've been uh, been away so long, guys. Uh, you know, all this virus stuff going around, and then, uh, you know, having a lot of other priorities going on. It's just been so so hard to focus on this, and it sucks because I love doing it, and I by no means want to give up on it. Uh, but I was gone for a very long time and I'm almost nervous just recording this because it's been so long since I've done a video I feel like I'm just gonna mess it up, but um, no, We're not talking about that though. I just want to let you guys know I am back um, I got a Kakarot video that I never even published way back when that I recorded forever ago that I got to put up I'm still doing that series. We're still going strong. It's gonna be all right. Don't worry. Nova King's got you It's all right but today we're talking about something completely different. I wanted something a little easier for me to start back on as I'm doing these videos. And you know what? I love doing my top tens. I love doing those. Those are a lot of fun to make. And I'm doing a top five this time because I, you know, I don't know. A little easier for me to make. But we're doing a top five villains in anime. We did pro uh, protagonists before, so I'm kind of we're kind of venturing off into that, you know, different character stuff. Um, so before we get into the actual list, I have a couple honorable mentions for this. We have Zamasu and Goku Black is one of them. Um, these guys, you know, Zamasu is a villain, like, they made the whole Goku Black arc really awesome. They made that arc for me, and they made a big part of why I liked Super so much. Um, Zamasu was one of those villains, and I, this is what I love about villains, and what, this is a repeating thing you'll see throughout the list, is I like villains that have an actual goal that you can actually sympathize with to an extent, and understand why they're doing what they do. Not just villains who just are the villains for sake of being villains but people who actually have like goals and motivations and you can kind of see Zama, uh, Zamasu as he go goes through his character development of being like this supreme kind training to devolving into hating humankind and you see why he feels that way and how he kind of devolves into madness and becoming what he is now what he became with Goku Black and everything and it's that whole convoluted plan of taking Goku's body and working together with the other past Zamasu like it's just it's so crazy how extensive his plan went. The whole, you know, Zero Mortal plan. It's crazy. It was really, really crazy. Hard to keep up with, but it was fun. And they were some of my favorite villains in all of Dragon Ball. So that's an honorable mention. And then we also have es uh, Esterosa uh, from Seven Deadly Sins. And why he's an honorable mention is because I can't really say too much about his character because I haven't seen the latest season of Seven Deadly Sins, so I don't know what's been going on. But I know that the one big encounter we got with him fighting Eskimo was crazy. And, you know, just his whole character of being this guy who you can't hate or else he can't fight him. But he's also inflicted on that. So he has to go through this whole thing of he can't hate anybody either. And, like, how he's almost brought to that brink of hating and just losing it when he had to fight Escanor. And he's just this powerhouse, this overpowered guy. And how it, I don't know. Like, the whole Escanor and Estros thing was a big deal. I love that fight. I love kind of the symbolism behind it. Super cool stuff, and so that's why he's on the honorable mention list. Um, jumping into the actual list, at number five, we have Shishio from Roni Kenshin, the manga and anime. I don't know if you guys have seen it or read it, but it's like one of my favorite anime of all time, and I'm reading the manga so I can actually get the ending of the manga. Um, Shishio is like, when you think of like Ronin, like Roni Kenshin villains, like Shishio is like the, the one you think of. He is just, he's hes badass. He's a cool villain. He has like these crazy ambitions of like taking over Japan and like you think he can do it. Like that's the thing that's crazy. You actually believe that he can take this huge plan of his and actually go go through with it. Because he has all these connections, all these different swordsmen working under him. hes It's just super cool. And it's like, you know, his backstory of being a manslayer and then, you know, going through all this stuff. Um, being like this bandaged up dude. And, uh... The, the biggest thing that puts him on this list was the final fight with him and Kenshin. One of my, it's probably my favorite scene, my favorite thing about the Kenshin series that I've seen. I love the Shishio final fight that we get in the anime. Super cool, super good stuff. Um, it just he's in a in a in an anime where it's not particularly fantasy based. It's you know it's still semi realistic. He's the one guy you feel like is inhuman. To where he's not even a person. You think he's a demon. You think with well, like his demeanor and like how he fights people, like with all like the fire stuff. It, it's 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 ridiculous. You don't even believe he's human anymore. And he's kind of devolved into that stage of not being human anymore. And that's what just makes him so scary and terrifying as a villain. Like almost you don't even see him as a person anymore. Just this monster. 
Um, so, just super cool stuff. And like again, like his final fight with with Kenshin and seeing the extreme lengths he'll go to to win, and like throwing everything, all his pawns away. Like you just see the kind of just just you know terrible individual he is, and it just it's it's so it's so guttural and so cool. And he's just one of those villains you you, you love to hate. And you, and you just can't it, deny how badass he is and how much of a cool rival he was to Kenshin um, with their two kind of opposing, you know, ideals. Um, so that's why he's at number five. Uh, number four, we have Overhaul from My Hero. Um, one of the biggest, you know, biggest, I guess, selling points of season four was Overhaul. Like, I just love him to death. One of my biggest issues with My Hero that I had, I love the show. But like my third favorite anime of all time. But one of the biggest issues I had was Shigaraki as a main villain, and even kind of all for one a little bit. Like they both kind of felt like very generic in a sense, to where um, they both just wanted to do evil stuff for the sake of doing evil stuff, and wanted to get rid of heroes for you know. It, it didn't feel like it had too much depth to it, at least where I'm at. I don't read the manga. I just read. I just watch the anime. So, and I've had, and I've gained a little bit more respect through, of, you know, to Shigaraki as I've seen him progress in season four, but, um, definitely love Overhaul way more. Overhaul is such a cool villain. Um, just his, his quirk is ridiculously overpowered, you know, being able to take apart and things and, re, you know, put them back together, like, in these crazy, you know, creative ways it makes his quirk just ridiculous right off the bat. Um, uh... His design's really cool. Love his design. Uh, I, I mean, just his fights alone too, with like with Mirio and especially with you know Deku. Those two fights that he's in are ridiculous, and he's just crazy. Um, like the whole arc he, is that is based around him is just so good, and a lot of that arc being so good is because he was the kind of center point of it and being the villain. And he's again, he's one of those villains you love to hate. You just hate this guy because he's such a you know piece of shit. You know. Fucking, he's a bad guy. Um, <laughs> so excuse my French, but he's a bad dude. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I just you love to hate him. All, like, all the stuff you find out about, like what he did to Airy and just all this stuff. But at the same time, even though you hate him so much, he still has a little bit of like reason for it. He still has his own like you know two cents on it in his own uh, perspective on the whole thing and why he thinks what he's doing is right. And he thinks that doing these things to Ares for the greater good of getting rid of quirks and going back to a simpler time of, you know, mob bosses ruling and everything like that. Like, you understand where he's coming from in his in his shoes. From his position, you understand it a little bit. He's part of this dying out, you know, culture of mob bosses and stuff like that that don't last in the hero world. And so he has this big ambitious goal to just eliminate quirks entirely, which is just such a cool story point. And, you know, again, it's like, it's the thing with Shishio, like, you think he can do it. Like, Overhaul is just so, you know, he's just so ambitious. You believe that he can pull off this kind of stuff. And so, just love Overhaul. Super cool guy. Well, he's not a cool guy. He's a bad dude. <laughs> but he's so bad that you can't help but not like him and just, you know, just love seeing him on screen whenever he's either fighting or monologuing. It's just cool. I, I, I think Overhaul is a super cool character and one of the biggest, um biggest saving graces for season four um <clears throat> my voice is going out again i'm not used to all this video stuff <laughs> i gotta get back in the rhythm but i'm having a lot of fun um number three i have pain and orochimaru kind of tied from from naruto i like them both for very different reasons um you know orochimaru is just very creepy and just like i remember when i first watched Naruto, i was literally just freaked out by this guy it was unsettling like he was just an unsettling character and like all the like crazy schemes he came up with and all this crazy stuff and how much he played into the whole Sasuke story like Orochimaru is just a really crazy crazy villain again like he's he again he's more he for he more fits the the stereotype of just being a bad guy for the sake of it but he does it so well and he comes off as so creepy and like his personality is just so I don't know it's 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 almost charming in a sense it's just it's super cool and you love to see him on screen you love to see the crazy stuff he says and I, and I like him. I like Orochimaru a lot. He's crazy, but I, I like him a lot. Um, Pain, you know, Pain was far more I ideologic in his in his you know things that he did. Uh, you know, you you see like his his speech to Naruto about like 
what about me? What about my village? What about my life? What about those things? Does that not matter to you? Does that, does that not matter in the grand scheme of things? And he's like, why, why should, why should you hate me when people were doing the same thing to me back then and nobody came to save me? Nobody came to, 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 to fix things. I had to take matters in my own hands. Um, it's just, it's, it's super cool. It made, it almost makes you as the viewer go, wow, he's, he's kind of got a point. Like he's kind of right to it in to an extent. And just the way you see him fight too, with like the six paths of pain, like such a creative way of having a villain set up, you know, combat wise of having these eight, you know, these eight, not eight, these six different bodies, you know, that they can all see, you know, they all have the same vision. They can all see what, what the other sees and when you think about it, when you put all the, the paths of pain together, it's so overpowered. The paths of pain are ridiculous and super strong. And just their fights with, like, Jiraiya, of course, like, super, you know, just super um, memorable stuff that you see from the from, from pain. And I love him as a villain. He's a super cool, you know, got the Renegon and everything. Like, just a super cool villain. He, he's very ideologic, and that's why I like him a lot. He has a reason for what he does. And especially when you see him as Nagato, you know finally turn over that leaf and kind of make up for what he did wrong it was super cool to see at the end too so i like pain a lot pain is a super cool villain concept and i, and I like seeing him a lot we saw a lot of him for a very long time in, in the akatsuki um number two i've got frieza the, the main the main baddie of dragon ball my boy frieza part of me thought about putting frieza at number one but i think with just how many times he's been like brought back from the dead and like I feel like that they just left Frieza alone and just kind of left him, you know, when he what is it, what is it, was in his prime with, like, the whole Namek stuff. I, you know, maybe he could have been number one, but not that I hate seeing him back again, like, in the Tournament of Power, but I think it was just kind of silly to keep bringing him back like that, and it kind of, you know, took away from the special kind of thing that we had with Frieza. Um, but he's a super cool villain. This is, you know, tyrant of the literal universe, like, you know... He was such the, he was such a well known and feared name amongst like the whole universe and things like that, and just the kind of hype that grew up front that grew from him like when we first started hearing about him in the Namek Saga when like King Kai's like telling Goku like yo don't don't scrap with this dude it's, it's, it ain't good like we just like we we were just fed this from the very beginning that Frieza is a bad dude he is like the strongest we've seen so far not just by a little bit by by a vast amount and. There was just this fear that kind of came with Frieza and like how demented he was and like how much like uh, just he took out like how much he got out of hurting other people. Super crazy stuff. And like he plays a big role with the whole Saiyans and like you know blowing up Planet Vegeta. Frieza is just a super cool character. And even when he comes back in Super, I still enjoy seeing him a lot. And he still has a lot with you know, especially the whole showdown with Jiren at the very end. Seeing Frieza is cool. Um, but I think just having him brought back time and time again starts to kind of belittle his character and kind of what he stood for. But nonetheless, Frieza's super cool. Love him. Love you know one of probably again you know, one of my favorite villains from Dragon Ball. Um, number one. Now I know in these lists generally you try and stick to one character per franchise. You don't keep going back to the same franchise from for multiple spots. But I have to give it to my boy Madara Uchiha. You know I got to give it to him. I mean, I don't know. Something about Madara. Like, he has that same kind of, like, build-up that Frieza had, where it's like, you saw his statue when Naruto and Sasuke first fought. You heard about him through, like, when Pete, when Obito was pretending to be Madara. You know, those kind of rumors, you know, going around. So we already kind of had this idea in our head of who he was and how he almost was spoken about in Legend. Like, it was like, he wasn't even talked about as if he was a human being. You know, he... He was on the same level as, like, Hashirama, who is literally seen as the god of Shinobi, you know? And then here's this big reveal that he actually does get brought back to life. And he just goes on this this murderous rampage against the, against the you know, Shinobi Alliance and just, just annihilates him. Like, that first, like, that is such a fantastic way to introduce a villain that you know is going to be strong. That is such a way to build them up and to just... Put this instinctual fear into the viewer of wow this dude ain't playing around like Madara is just ridiculous you know Susano uh the Susano uh uh armored up nine tails that he had back when he fought Madara that I mean not Madara Hashirama that was whack that was completely whack like the whole fight between him and you know Hashirama was a huge deal 
and to see a villain that caused so much like destruction and like you know caused all those problems back then being a current problem for Naruto and everyone like seeing how everlasting Madara and his plan was and seeing how intricate it was of you know training Obito and doing all these things and so he could you know have the infinite Tsukuyomi like again like he has like a he has a reasoning for what he does so you, you can't entirely not see the purpose and what he's trying to do like he has motives and he has goals and from his own perspective he thinks he's doing the right thing but he just takes it to such a extreme degree and just annihilates anybody that will not follow along with him and he's just so ridiculously overpowered to the point where I think even the creator or somebody in Naruto had said something about how they didn't know how they'd get rid of Madara because he's just almost unkillable and it's true Madara is just ridiculous and you know of course he you know how he gets offed you know at the very end is silly and sucks but I think overall with how much we saw of him and from him before that makes up for it and Madara is just this super cool super awesome villain probably probably my favorite I don't know I had a really hard time between putting Frieza here and Madara second so it's a toss up between those two for sure but Madara and Frieza are you know they're crazy super cool villains but I think I'm gonna put Madara at number one uh, just because he has like this this he has both the like villain for the sake of being a villain kind of aspect to him where he's just going off on everybody but then you also look and see that he did go through a childhood and he went through living with Ma with you know fighting with Hashirama to you know devolving into this point and you understand his goals to an extent and just seeing him on screen regardless of when it is is ridiculous like you are always baffled when you see Madara on screen doing something just throwing meteors at people like it's he took this power scaling of where Naruto characters were at to a completely different level and it was just insane um but yeah that I think is gonna be my list of my top five villains uh let me know what you guys think of this list what your guys's list would be just anything like that I love to hear from you guys um very hesitant to come back and start making videos again I really didn't know if I could get anyone to watch again but uh but at the end of the day it's something I'm really passionate about and I know there's at least a couple individuals out there that do enjoy it and I want to do it for those people so um sorry if I've rambled getting used to making videos again but I plan to get back on it here being quarantined not like I have much else to do I want to do this again because it's one of my favorite hobbies and I love doing this for you guys so look forward to you know other gameplay stuff I have another top five planned out so uh yeah thank you guys so much for sticking through the video if you made it to the end thank you so much um I really appreciate you guys as always um and yeah I guess that's it uh remember to stay positive in these trying times of the virus I hope everyone's staying you know healthy and safe and you know, doing your best to get your schoolwork done from home, because I know I'm, I'm, I'm in for it. It's definitely tough having to work from home every day, but I'm getting it, so. <laughs> but yeah, stay positive, enjoy life, because you only get one shot at it. Keep safe and healthy, everyone. It's Nova King from the Nova Kingdom, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.